Today I'm going to go over some basic Linux commands that will help you navigate your Linux system. I'm going to focus on the Raspberry Pi since it's a very accessible piece of hardware and uh, a fun little computer to play with. So um, I'm on my MacBook and I'm going to remote into my Raspberry Pi using SSH. SSH is a remote shell that is secure and the very first time you connect with SSH you're going to be prompted about accepting a key and it's that key that will encrypt the traffic between your computer which happens to be my MacBook and the Raspberry Pi uh, so the traffic is encrypted between those two devices and I happen to know that the IP address of my Raspberry Pi is 192.168.111.128 and I found that out after I plugged in my Raspberry Pi and I typed ifconfig which we'll talk about later so I now make a connection ask me for the password and I log in now this is a uh, the Raspberry Pi B I have another one the B2 uh, so we'll take a look at a couple different ones so it shows that my last login, when I SSH into this, was earlier today, uh, from this IP address, 192.68.111.93, and that's the IP address of my MacBook. And this prompt over here shows me I'm logged in as the user Pi, at, and then the name of the Raspberry Pi is btsyncpy, and this indicates that I'm in my home directory. So a couple things about the command line. Uh, is the change directory command available to change directories into different uh, folders or um, directories on the file system. So I'm going to use the cd command and I'm going to do cd space and then backslash which is on the question mark key. Hit enter and this takes me to the root of the file system. So if I type ls it displays all of the directories and a temp directory. So if I want to change directories to etc, I'll do change directory etc. I can also use the command cd space backslash etc. So the difference between these two commands is the first one identifies a relative path, meaning that I'm in the root of the file system here, and I'm going into the etc directory, which is just up one level from where I'm at currently. Using this command, I can use this command from anywhere within the file system. So I'm doing cd backslash, meaning I'm indicating start at the beginning of the file system and then go to this directory. So this is an absolute path. So if I change directory to home slash pi, that is again indicated with the tilde symbol showing me that I'm in my home directory. And if I tried cd etc, let's say no such directory because if I do an ls there is no etc directory in this folder that I'm currently in or directory that I'm in but if I did a cd slash etc it will take me directly to the etc directory another useful command when you're navigating the file system and changing from one directory to another is pwd present working directory it shows me currently where I'm at so if I change directory to network, hit enter, the prompt of certain Linux systems won't always tell you exactly where you're at. Sometimes it'll just show the current directory, not the full path. So now if I hit PWD, it shows me that I'm in the etc directory and the network subdirectory. So if I want to go back to my home directory, remember up here it was the tilde symbol. A little shortcut for this is cd space tilde. And now I go back to my home directory. All right, now that we can navigate from one directory to another, now let's take a look at a few other things. So I want to learn more about the ls command. I want to use the manual for the ls command. So I'm going to type the command man for manual, space, and then the command I need help with, ls. Hit enter. And it takes me into the manual for ls. It shows me the actual name, list directory contents, and then all of the different options 
for what I want to do. Dash A for all, dash capital A for almost all, and all the other options here you can look through yourself. Use colors or directories and so forth. So to get out of the man page, I can arrow up and down. And to get out of it, you press the letter Q to quit. So now that I learned that LS displays my directory, I can do LS space dash A. Now it shows me all of the files, even the hidden ones. So here's a hidden file, bash RC. You'll want to learn about that one later on. And then the dot dot and the dot and a few other dot profiles and so forth. So we'll take a look at those later on in other videos. Now I have a lot of stuff on my screen here of what I've typed. So I'm going to clear this up a little bit, typing the clear command. It'll take me back to a clear screen. So again, that was C-L-E-A-R and enter. All right, a little bit more about LS, some useful things about it. You can use the LS dash A to show all, LS space dash L to show a long listing. The long listing gives you a little more information than just the name of the file of the directory. It actually gives you information about the permissions. It gives you information about the owner and the group, the size of the file, and the date it was last modified. And then, of course, the name of the file. So if I wanted to combine those two options, ls, a, and l, I would get a long listing of all of the hidden files. So here's an example of a hidden file, the .bashrc that we talked about. Notice it's not up here in the first ls-l. So you can combine different options to display these. All right, some other useful commands. Let me clear the screen. To get to know your Raspberry Pi or Linux system, you're going to also use a command called cat. What cat does is it displays the contents or it concatenate the file. So if I take a look at my directory, I can see I have a bob.txt in there. This file exists on my computer, not yours necessarily. If I want to see the contents of that file, I can type cat bob.txt. And there it shows me some text that I had copied in there. Probably the raven, it looks like. Once upon a midnight dreary. Yep. So there you can see cat bob.txt, and it displayed the contents of it. I can also use, you notice how I had to scroll up. I can also use the more command, more bob.txt. And here I hit the space bar and I go page by page. Well, something even better than more is less space bob.txt. Hit enter. And this one, I can arrow down and back up so I can scroll through it. So the old adage, less is more. To get out of the less interpreter, hit Q to quit, take you out of the less command and back to the command prompt. I want to show you one other trick with the command as long as we're using these. If I type more space bo, as long as I type the first few letters of a something of a file that is unique, all I have to do is the tab key and it will automatically complete the typing for me. So I'm not typing super fast in the video, I'm actually letting the system do it for me. Enter on that, and get out of it, hit Q. I'm going to clear my screen. So if I take a look at the files that are here, notice I have a file with some spaces in it. Intro to certain myths .doc. So if I wanted to do a more on that file, or a cat, I go type cat space int and hit the tab key, and it will automatically type it out for me. I don't have to type it out. Notice what it does for the spaces. The space intro period space to space creation. It puts a forward slash and then the space. That tells the command interpreter that when you execute the command cat, this is one variable for the cat command. Don't interpret the space to mean that it's another option like we did with the ls. Whoa. So this is a Word document, so it has a lot of 
some stuff in there. Let me clear my screen again. So for example, if I do an ls dash l int, what I'm doing here is I'm running the command ls space, and then I have the dash l to show a long listing space, and then the name of the file. But notice the file has spaces in it, and this is where the forward slash space comes in play. So it knows that this is not an option like the dash L or A option that we used earlier, that it is actually a space in the name of the file that we want to do a long listing on. So now I can see more information about the size of this file and the date it was created. All right, so now that we have used cat more and less, we are going to use the cat command to display information in the uh, about the processor and memory. Uh, so let's take a look at learning a little bit more about our Raspberry Pi. So we're going to do a cat slash proc CPU and if I hit the tab key twice notice that there's two things that have a CPU in it. CPU with a backslash. This means I'm sorry, the forward slash. This means that it's a directory, and then the CPU info, which is an actual file. So I'm going to have to type I, and then hit the tab key, and then it will automatically complete. Hit enter, and this tells me a little bit of information about the, obviously, CPU. It's an ARM version 6 processor. It tells me revision, hardware, serial number of the CPU, and so forth. So, Next is, if I did cat slash proc, hit the tab key twice, and it says you have 126 possible things you could type that come after the proc directory. Do you want to display them? Yes. So here you can see other information that you can look at. So it would be a great place to go and actually take a look at what you might want to um, see. about your your system. So if we choose something here, we looked at CPU info, that's what we typed previously. We could type buddy info or IO ports. So let's take a look at since this is a Raspberry Pi or, or we can take a look at mem info. Let's take a look at mem info. Mem I hit the tab key and it automatically completes it for me. And it tells me how much memory total I have. 496. Now again, this is a Raspberry Pi B, so it has 512 meg of RAM total. And I have 39 megabytes, or 39,000 kilobytes available. That's not being used. What my buffers are using, my cache, and so forth, active, inactive, all this information, swap file, total, and so forth. So that shows me all that information. Nice little command to take a look at. Another way to take a look at your memory as long as we're on this, is the free command. Free. If you hit enter, this tells you your total memory free. Notice that number is the same as this number. So it's displaying how many 496,000 kilobytes, which is 496 megabytes, what is used and what is free. If I use the free command or the man free, I can take a look at some options. And if I want to display the information in megabytes instead of the default kilobytes, because kilobytes is the default here, then I just use a dash M. Or in human readable, depending upon what I have for space, kilobytes or megabytes, I can use a dash H. Because I don't know if I have gigabytes on this thing or megabytes, so I can use dash H. So to get out of this and give it another shot, I type free dash H, and now it shows me 484M for megabytes, and I'm using 446 meg. So that's it for today. We'll try another video that go over some more information and more useful commands.